One of the real issues that we always must remind people about infectious diseases, in particular influenza, expect the unexpected. Uh, this pandemic came out of nowhere. Uh, people all were worried about bird flu in Asia, which is a legitimate concern and still could happen as the next pandemic strain after this one. But this one came out of the Americas. It came from a, a, a strain that had been around many years ago and, and uh, it came back again. So that uh, one of the real reasons why it's so important to support the kind of scientific research we're doing here is that with influenza, you've got to expect the unexpected. We're going to realize that we were not well prepared for a serious influenza pandemic. Fortunately, this pandemic, as it goes for most of the population, has actually been quite mild. Uh, for about 1% of the population, it's been a very serious uh, illness. But if this were a more serious pandemic, one where, in fact, we had, uh, uh, like a 1918 experience, where up to uh, 2 to 3% of the population died, uh, we would have realized that we would, were terribly underprepared with vaccine, that our businesses in general had not really considered what the implications might be of something like this in the global just-in-time economy, and that our healthcare system was ill-prepared to handle any kind of surge capacity for any serious uh, nationwide problem. Our response to this pandemic today in a very large way is dictated by what the virus does. If we don't see any increase in the severity of disease among the population, then we're probably going to have another several months of not good times, but not bad times in the sense of the number of deaths that will occur in our society. Uh, we'll continue to go to work, we'll continue to have most of us uh, have our kids in school, and we'll continue to uh, get vaccine out there in an orderly way that will allow some people to be protected. If the virus changes in severity, and we actually see a larger proportion of people becoming seriously ill and dying, then all bets are off. Then I think society's response to this will change quite a bit from where it is now. Uh, and of course, the ideal situation would be as if we, in fact, see the virus actually reduce its ability to cause disease, and over time, we know that that will happen. Well, we're already learning some very valuable lessons, which unfortunately were lessons that some of us talked about before this ever happened, but we didn't want to learn them until actually we were confronted with them. One is the 1950s technology we use for influenza vaccine is just inadequate. We can't count on that anymore. We have to have a better system, and we can. Second of all is we have to understand that the healthcare system we have in this country today, while everyone says it's the best healthcare system in the world, actually has little surge capacity to deal with a crisis like this. And we're going to have to look at how much do we want to pay or must we pay if we're going to have more surge capacity and how do we do that. The third thing I think that's going to be very important is understanding that even for something as you might far, think is far removed from the business world as public health is, it's not. Many of the critical products that we use in this country today, pharmaceutical products, uh, uh, medical products in general, uh, our computer chips, the computers in the whole that we use, I can go down a laundry list of things, all originate in Asia. And so that whatever happens on a global basis with a pandemic is bound to impact what happens here. And even though there's been limited impact so far, there's been enough that people see, wow, what if this was a 1918-like experience? Many of the things that we count on every day being available wouldn't be. So if we look at those areas and then say for the next pandemic, we have to be better prepared, that'll be in itself very valuable lessons.